So we're curious about um, what you do in live performance. You mentioned a little bit about that before, but um, which parameters in the patch do you do you actually change? Um, basically, I, I use all loop players and mixers, and then I use the. Um, you know, I don't know how you refer to each of these two different mute functions, but the actual mute on the loop player and occasionally the mute on the mixer. For me, the the mute. On the loop players, I guess based on how large of a buffer you have set has a certain like lag to it, and I've grown to use that lag as like an ultimate function of it to be able to drop multiple ones at the same time. So I think you know at the beginning I wasn't even necessarily thinking about that lag, but now the way I use it, it's almost like the way you play the instrument. I'm kind of used to that specific on my computer how fast it runs, how quickly that drops. So um, occasionally the mutes on the mixers are crucial if I have to actually you know, mute something at a very specific time that might be in between bars or something like that. And uh, for more straight up percussion loops and for things that are more uh, perfect, um, I actually use the mute functions on the um, individual samples. And then during the show, it's a funny way to think about it, but the loops are kind of constantly going. So I um, kind of keep track of my head of where I'm at, so it's like, oh, this sample, because some samples might be larger than others, one might be 32 bars. If you're running a whole bunch of loops that are like two bars, and all of a sudden you want to drop an a cappella sample that's 32 bars, it's very easy to get lost on where you were and when to start that. So occasionally, um, you know, I just have audio cues within it, and it's been a new thing recently where I'll have um, a loop that's 95% silence and just a drum fill at the end. So I'll like cue that one, and then when I, if I'm getting lost within the set, I have them kind of as, because sometimes it's just flowing, and it's like a, the timing's keeping up, nothing's going wrong. So even because I do this over and over and over, the timing of it every night just changes, just naturally, just because I don't click perfectly, and you know I kind of get mixed up in it. So occasionally it will, the set will kind of be going, and uh, I'll be like, where the hell am I? Like when are the, I'm lost within you know the, the time structure. So I'll kind of cue the loops. Uh, with the audio cues and say, oh, when I hear that drum field, then I drop the next sample. So that's basically how it goes. And the way I assemble it, you know, I rehearse it and go over it. And definitely le there's levels of improvisation in terms of, I, I have more stuff usually loaded than I want to use. Just occasionally at a venue, it's like, oh, it's just not heavy enough. I need to add more kick or I need more clap. So that's kind of the level where it's improvised. It's just on the percussion and, you know, things like that. As far as the actual organization of like, I stop this sample now and go to this sample then. Um, that stuff I rehearse and go over and over and over. Um, but naturally within the set, some nights I screw up more than others, so that kind of changes where it goes. And you know, sometimes nights I'm fixated on one thing, I want to play that oh, more repetition. Other nights I'm like, I want to just skip over that. So that's kind of how it goes down. So a lot of your loops are quite short, so you've got a small, like a low level of granularity. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, so yeah. you can have. You know, you're really you're remixing things at a really you know, compositional level. Yeah, and I think um, yeah, I just think you know the, the shortness of it just allows you to be in total control. Just in terms of, I feel like sometimes if you would have a loop where it's like the song building and building and building, if you would get lost within your time and you would drop that in the middle, it would be building you. You know, as opposed to having each of those parts isolated, and you can kind of build it yourself. So if there's a song, like I mean, I could give you an example. I mean, this yeah, is just great. really basic, where it's like. From the beginning of that album, like the Spencer Davis group sample, it's like, you know, it's gonna be hard to hear here. So I can turn this up. Just, so this is just like one sample. Um, and I like to have that isolated from, from this sample. You know, this is like one sample, basically, this loop. Just so you can kind of like actually perform that now and actually you know and actually cue it when you want it and then you know on top of that it's kind of like all the drum things i like to have pieced apart so it's like on the album you have this roy orbison sample it's just those drums and that's just a tiny tiny just snare loop then on top of that you have like this clicking sound which is something that i you know just process through audio mulch through the pulse comb or something like that and chopped it up um, so that's just one loop, and then this is like a sample from Africa Bimbada that, that I distorted in audio mulch, basically. And then this is a kick drum. So I just like to have all those isolated. So like live, you know, you can, uh, you know, this is the beat with those four playing simultaneously, and uh, just small things like you know getting rid of the Africa Bimbada thing changes the energy of that a lot. 
So a lot of times it'll be like just that in the bass. And then, you know, when I kick into the organ, I'm gonna wanna cue the African and bottom. That's when it kind of comes back to that lag where I can kind of cue up a few samples simultaneously. And I'll start this like. So it's kind of like always like kind of just filling in. But to me, it's like, you know, as real as like doing a collage live could be. And then you would have like a vocal sample on top of that. So you don't you don't do any sort of um, you don't change the number of bars and, and change a the, little sort bit of pitch occasionally like um, you know sometimes even you know just with the overall BPM sometimes it's like oh I want this to be a little faster or slower and then occasionally um, you know I like to go from half time the samples I'm trying to think of an example here where you would just kind of cut it in half but yeah sometimes you know just small things like you know if I chose to. If I wanted to just, you know, if I was going to transition from this part into something that was like half the speed, um, you know, I could kind of, it's going to be hard to hear a kick drum, but you can always kind of like, you know, sometimes mute things out and then slow it down, double it up, and then, and then kind of like transition into something that was like, you know, you know, half the tempo sort of thing. Um, I used to do more, you know, pulse comb and live processing with some of the internal features on audio mulch live but anymore it's like the pace that i want to keep dropping samples i really can't do any of the processing um live well, i mean i could it's just like i want to keep moving so quickly and it's like i think when things are isolated that much it's like my hands are full so it's tough for me to just be like tweaking the reverb on a sample yeah, or something like that because it's like i gotta be dropping like five more things i just wanted to ask a question mm -hmm. about the overview of the patch like mm -hmm. can you give a sort of idea of sure yeah basically um in each template um i kind of have an understanding of how much my computer can handle in terms of samples um so i kind of just build up these things where i'll do eight loop players into a mixer and just have a bunch of those and um you know like i said it looks a little sloppy over here but basically every 10 minutes of the set or so will be kind of mapped out here and um, like I was mentioning earlier, sometimes, you know, I'll prepare more than I want to have. So it'll be like, I'll skip over certain things, this or that. And, uh, you know, I just kind of try to keep it as uniform as possible over here. You know, occasionally I'll just layer up some other samples if I'm, if I need more than actual eight loops for that to execute that particular part. But it's kind of the way it's organized in my head, um, which I think has gone on to heavily influence just the way it is on the albums, you know, just in terms of this amount of samples and uh, this sort of work pace. And, you know, of course, I don't ever want to think of it as like song A, song B. It's I want to keep it all fully integrated. Um, but you know, just as far as like a vocal, a main vocal theme or a main melody theme, I kind of execute those on each of the mixers. Um, it's kind of how I keep it organized in my head. Oh, so, so um, obviously this is Audio Mulch One. Mm -hmm. um, do you do you have everything you need in Audio Mulch One? You're not planning to switch to. I, I, haven't, I haven't messed around too just because like I said I'm I might be out of my mind or insane but I just like am so constantly busy it's just like I don't want to fool around I want to just like make the music and prepare it. but I would like it I haven't really fooled around with it much at all um you know there are some small things that like I said I feel like some of the things that are hold the program back some small things are features to me at this point like so, what? so it might almost be a bummer if they're resolved like just the whole thing with like each of these loops doesn't have an internal clock on it um so which is like um not to talk about like the competition but ableton will have an internal clock per like sample you know so it's like so you would never have to have that audio cue to know when a oh, sample is like coming up yeah, yeah 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 um so for me and you know if i had that i would never be like oh i'm dropping the sample where is it coming in but i feel like that's kind of part of the excitement at this point like like i said i've just grown to like have this instrument and i like when it messes up sometimes it's very interesting i, I think you know a set where it just flows perfectly might even be bland because i think even the mistakes aren't like oh the beat dropped at a wrong bpm it's like more just samples coming and going at different times so um, I don't know if I would want to resolve that at this point. I feel like it's definitely a feature where people, especially the more well-known segments from the albums, like Notorious B.I.G., Juicy Verse from the Night Ripper album, people are very familiar with that song to begin with. I think the mashup I have on there is like more, one of the more well-known things I've done. So a lot of times live, when I drop that at the incorrect time, it's awesome to me because it's like people are like, oh, kind of bummed out. But then when it loops around over and starts over, it's you know definitely 
something that wouldn't have happened if that would have been executed flawlessly. So um, I kind of like that.